moss green. This has been setting up overnight. You can kind of see how it uh, um, separates a little bit with the water on top, and that's just fine. If I'm doing large batches, you know, using one of these uh, paint stirs works really well. And we're just going to get all the, the, the settled paint off the bottom, get that nice and stirred up. It only takes a, you know, a minute or two. In this case, the paint seems about the right consistency. Sometimes I would add a little water to it if it's a little thick, but um, this looks to be really good at this point. So I'm just pushing down on the drill a little bit to get any stuff off the bottom. As my drill starts to lose power, right in the middle of the video, isn't that always perfect? Anyway, here we go. I'm going to grab a brush here. Here's a new brush. I'm going to take this up. And this is that green paint. Now, I don't worry much about the chunkiness on the side here of the bucket. And you could pour this into another utensil or another kink container if you wanted. And um, a little splashing. I just picked that up. What we're going to do here is the same, same process. First, I want to go inside the, the corner, the styles and the rails. Come around here. I read this in a, in a book years ago about how professional painters do it. I don't know if this is... This is a, it was true or not, but it always seemed to work well for me to hit this panel first, come in here, and you know, do those details in the middle, and then come back. And uh, here I'm going to keep the keep the paint a little bit heavier, so we're going to try to cover up all that orange color in one single coat. Pull that around there, trying not to leave too much puddling in the middle, and also picking up those brush strokes there. We're going to come back across here, do the end grain, here, do this, across here. You can see this is just, this is just, this is the standard mix. There's nothing, uh, no extra pigment, anything added to this. You can see that coverage. I prefer just cheap China bristle brushes. I use them for almost every project I do. Um, they seem to work well. They hold the paint real well. Um, they do eventually wear out. They leave some little hairs or fibers behind. You know, to me, you know, if I get a few fibers in my paint, you know, doesn't. There's one right there. Doesn't bother me as far as uh, texture. Some people would pull the hinges off. Um, this particular project, you know, leaving the hinges on worked really well. So we left them on all the way through the uh, stripping process. This original cabinet was uh, painted with about two layers of white paint over top of a varnish. And uh, we used a uh, infrared stripper to take it off to heat the varnish up and remove the paint. You can see it's already starting to set up here and there and dry. And that's what we really need in order for the, uh, the, the process to uh, uh, be able to wipe it down and do our gradation. Just going to touch up these edges here, and we're going to have to cut out here for a few minutes while this uh, sets up, and then we'll come back. And when it's when it's a little drier, and I'll show you how to do the the wearing part or um, distressing with a uh, damp cloth and a bucket of water, and how it's really simple and uh, effective. And the milk paint, you have a pretty long open time as far as working it. The longer it actually stays uh, dries. The uh, harder it is to remove, but at the same time, you know, it's still pretty easy to remove. I'm just going to get that bottom edge down there. I want to try to make sure I got all the orange covered. Uh, this is flashing off a little, so I might just take a little paint here and there. Cover up all that salmon paint. All right, We're, we'll talk to you in just a minute. Thank mm -hmm. you.